how stupid I would have been. 13 years old, guilty of being a murderer, spending the rest of my life in the penitentiary. For what? Because I, I wanted to show somebody I was cool? Is, that, is it worth it? Your whole life in jail to prove to somebody that you got hard. That's only showing you ignorant and don't have an understanding. And so the young people in our society today, a lot of the thoughts that you possess are not your own thoughts. And it's not your fault that you feel that, you know, you got to fit in. I understand that. I've been through that lifestyle. But one of the things that you and I have to remember as Muslims, brothers, we have a deen. We have a way of life that teaches us the highest principles, be it in morality, be it in human interaction, politics, be it in economics, whatever you have a concern in your life, Islam has a system that if you follow it, you can be successful. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most influential man in the world. Did you know that? They have books written by who is who in the world. The most influential man in the world is Prophet Muhammad. The most common name in the world is Muhammad. So Muslim brothers who have this idea of being cool, I'm just telling you as a brother, you could do whatever you want to do. I didn't come here today to tell you what to do. You could do whatever you want to do. It's your life that you will waste. I'm not here to follow you. I won't tell you, you don't do this, you don't do that. You know exactly right from wrong. If you want to live your life and behave like the Kafirs, go ahead. Because there are things that you will see and things you will go through. You'll say, you know what? Damn. This is what Brother Abdul Malik was talking about. See, I like to take some of you on a trip to the prisons. And right downtown in the courthouse, with people in the jail cell waiting to be seen, sleeping on the floor, people getting spit on and pushed around, people just showing you no respect because their minds is that of an animal because they have been reduced to the lowest of the low. For one reason, when you don't believe in Allah, shaitan becomes your leader. When you don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan becomes your leader. Let me give an example, brothers. If I'm a thug, and you're my best friend, and you're married, as a thug, I don't have no respect to you as my friend. Now, how would you like to go home after having a wonderful wedding and find your best friend in the bed with your wife? You say, you're a thug, man. I don't care about nothing. I'm a thug. But he's your friend. He's your friend and he's a thug and you just was blessed by God to make $50,000 in your first year on your job. And because he's a real thug, he sets you up for your gold, for your jewelry and everything. You're eating with him, right? And all of a sudden, put a gun to your head. Be like, yo, man, open up the safe. You're like, yo, what? Open the safe. You're my man. Look, I'm a thug. I'm a thug for life. Get the cream. Now, get the cash. Like, yo, why? Yo, click, click, get the cash, man. You think I'm playing? All right, look, watch this. For your wife. Open your mouth. Bah! Get the cash. That's the stuff y'all want to start living? That's the kind of stuff y'all want to get into? Brothers, man, listen, man. This stuff ain't no joke. Gang banging. Y'all y'all watching TV. Y'all watching videos. Y'all better stay with Islam. That's your protection. Because even those who call themselves thugs, they respect Muslims. So long as Muslims are not trying to imitate them. If you say you Muslim and you walk a straight line, the hardest thug will knock on the mosque door. Say, so, yo man, check it out. Is the Imam inside, man? I want to talk to him. Yeah, come on in, man. What's up? Chill. Not in, man. Have a seat. And he'll drop a tear. I just had two in my mind. I said, yo, man, I'm tired of living like this, man. I done killed mad people. I done put out mad heads, man. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I done stuck so many cats up, man. I can't sleep at night because I hurt so many people. Muslims don't want to live. You don't want to live like that. I got a bro two brothers when they come out their door. They looking because somebody wants to kill them now. 
They got a warrant, not a warrant, they got a bounty price on their head. Somebody just paid $50,000, said, bring me his head. He just beat me again earlier today. Said, bring, and the thug that's in them, huh? You know how one brother was going to set up the other brother? Because they want to be thugs. They're Muslims. They went back to the dunya. They went back to the days of Jahiliyyah. You know what the brother said? He said, yo man, come on to Salat to Jummah this Friday and bring your guns with you. But come to Jummah prayer. How can you tell your brother that is a Muslim, come to Jummah prayer and bring your guns with you? How? And I met with them and I told them, you know what? If you don't want to practice Islam, the hell with you. Do what you want to do. Because if Allah's word is not sufficient for you to adhere to the message of Islam and to be obedient and respect that in Islam, the life of another Muslim is sacred. That you don't kill your brother. You don't rob your brother. You don't set your brother up. You see... As we sit here in this little community and we think of thug lifestyle, this is why today in Muslim countries, countries go to war. Because among the leaders of the world of Islam are those who have a thug mentality. They want what they want when they want it, and if they can't get it, they will go to war and kill innocent men and women and children. There are children right now, brothers, in the world of Islam. They can't get no medicine. Muslim kids right now are going blind in the hospital because they can't get medicine. Muslim kids right now, their heads are growing big as their whole body because they can't get no medicine. Because there's some Muslim brother who's in a position of power, who's a thug. And until he get what he want, he say the whole nation can die. You can get video footage of Muslim leaders taking Muslim brothers who want to practice Islam and put the gun in their mouth and smack them upside their head and stomp them and then shoot them and put fear in the hearts of other Muslims. When we know that as Muslims the only fear we should have is of who? As a Muslim, who are you supposed to fear? Who? So you as a Muslim brother, if you become a thug, that means you want to take the place of God. Which means you become like Satan. You want another human being to fear you when they should only be afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So shaitan, he started using you now. You go to a Muslim conference, and instead of going to say, Assalamu Alaikum, no. Yeah, brother Ahmed gonna be there? Alright, yo, tell the brothers be their glass. We going there too. Yo, come on, man, let's go, Ah. We the, we the Muslim mafia. And you go to the conference, put your pants down, put your earrings in, get your little cell phones, and you walk around like you're hard. But you know where to do that at. You won't come to, to the hood and do that. You do that among weak Muslims. Because in the hood, brother, they eat y'all up. I'm telling you right now. Y'all better stick with this deen. That's the best thing you got. It's Islam. Y'all don't want that lifestyle. It's the lifestyle of animals. And ain't no love in the game for nobody. Nobody is trusted. Nobody. Islam has come to reform the thug life. And that's what I want to end with you with today. Islam has come, brothers, to give us guidance. You want to be respected? Islam will teach you how to get respect. Islam was able to transform the life of people like Malcolm X, who is well respected. Islam came and transformed the life of people like Muhammad Ali, the world's champion. Islam came and took thugs like Khalid ibn Walid and reformed his whole life. And even though he's dead, it is as though he's alive. Because we remember Khalid ibn Walid as an example, as the sword of Allah. Because he took the courage that he had to fight, and he used it as a pole to putting fear in the hearts of men. He used it to defend the spirit of Islam. People like Umar ibn Khattab, read his life before Islam. He was a man of Jahiliyyah. A man, because of thug lifestyle, he buried his own daughter alive. Is that what you would like to do? You like to go back to the days of ignorance and watch your father take your baby sister that's just three months old and bury her in the dust of the soil of America and watch your little baby sister cry out. That's what you want to become a part of? No Muslim brother in his right mind would even use the terminology 
I'm a thug Muslim. That just means you're ignorant. Because ain't no such thing as a